in here. I'm Callie Libby. I'm a, a graduate um, LIS student at San Jose State University. Yay! And I was also a research assistant to Dr. Jeremy Kim. So welcome and thank you for attending my presentation, Creating YA Libraries in Virtual Worlds. Now this presentation is a part of a study on the recreation of young adult library spaces in virtual environments. The study was conducted from 2005 to last November 2014. So we're wrapping up our dissemination phase and this is one of the last presentations on this topic that will be directly connected to the study. Okay, Jen, next. Okay, video game designer <clears throat> and author of Reality is Broken, Why Games Make Us Better and How They Can Change the World, Jane McGonigal, believes that games in the 21st century will be a primary platform for enabling the future. And the reason that for this is because, as she says, the real world just doesn't offer up as easily the carefully designed pleasures to make us happy. And so there's a growing perception in the gaming community that reality compared to games is broken. So while we're not talking about gaming in the strictest sense here in Second Life, we are talking about elements of virtual reality that resemble gaming and that can be made to follow what McGonagall and James G. strongly believe is the way educators such as us should shepherd learners in the future and the nearer the future the better but to help you get into the right frame of mind feel free to just go ahead and substitute the word game with virtual reality because really the sentiment is the same next so this is going to be in um, three segments and um, we're going to give a first a quick overview of the study and second, the recreation of the young adult library spaces in virtual environments. And third, we're going to discuss how Second Life and other virtual spaces can serve as a design, survey, and workspace for the creation of a real-world YA library space. Questions, applications, and outcomes. So in the uh, Institute of Museum and Library Sciences um, short IMLS study, Dr. Kemp's focus was on researching the use of immersive learning environments when developing the virtual YA spaces. And so we use survey tools to collect data from public um, observation and appraisals of the spaces. Now, <clears throat> this would not mean only and by itself that library administrators would work solely with the architectural firms and things like that when they're building new or redecorating old spaces and then you know just kind of have a little bit of input from the young patrons that the spaces are for and from the general public we're talking about trying to get a real collaboration that includes all major stakeholders giving each group full access to participate in the design and creation of the space so speaking of that like um, was mentioned we're gonna go ahead and have a short tour of the virtual spaces at the end. But I want to give a shout out. Um, Dr. Kemp's former RA, Julie Whitehead, was the one who um, built the, um, the virtual spaces, not only for the survey and the study, but also the three that we left here. And I also want to thank Snow, who was really kind enough to make some repairs to the site. Um, there were some mysterious damages, and um, so she was really cool, and she helped out with that. Next. And again, I'm sorry, I hope I'm caught up. I, I, my avatar is having a, an issue. So segment one. And now, after reviewing the survey responses collected from library professionals and youth patrons at 700 libraries across the nation, we got 25 together and asked them to submit additional video recording data and conduct ethnographic content analysis. And then we took 10 of those and created virtual representations of these real world YA spaces. And they were replicated and put here in Second Life um, for the virtual component of the study. Of those, we took three 
and we put them here for touring and educational uh, purposes. Next, this is the IMLS study overview. And these are pictures of the survey the participants took after looking at random YA library spaces. The Second Life instruction set up for the student um, survey takers was um, they have the inclusion of the directions. So it made it easier for participants to come in, create an avatar in Second Life, and then navigate the survey site. The data from these surveys would then be collected for the data compilation phase of the study. Next. Now, the principal investigators is um, Dr. Anthony Bernier, who is the project's principal investigator. He's also an assistant professor at San Jose uh, State High School. He has um, designed and consulted on many innovative YA spaces, and he is the topic's most published author. But my boss was Dr. Jeremy Kim. He's also a faculty member in the iSchool, and he's an internationally recognized expert in the use of immersive environments for learning. So under his leadership, um, this List Island opens its Second Life um, component about, what is it, four or five years ago? And he also played a key role in developing the iSchool's Teen Space Lab and Second Life where these pilot projects have already demonstrated that virtual environments are perfectly suited to exploring the physical design of library space. Next. I wish I had like a little bell. Ding. Here, this is general information. The study was built on Dr. Um, Anthony Bernier's um, successful 2008-2009 study grant but that grant led to the full five-year study. And so our grants ended up being funded by IMLS, the Public Library Association, the Young Adult Library Services Association, and VOYA, which is a professional journal for YA librarians. All the data was collected um, through San Jose State's um, iSchool program. It was SLIS back then. Next, in segment two, we're going to go ahead and discuss the virtual replication of YA spaces. Next, Mark Prinsky. <clears throat> Mark Prins uh, Prinsky is a learning and education expert, and he's best known as the person who coined the terms digital native and digital immigrant. Now, he wrote that we will never understand or use the technology in precisely the same way as digital natives do. This distinction is critical in education because we are currently in a time where all of our students are digital natives. Yet, the bulk of our educators, teachers, administrators, and curriculum developers are digital immigrants. And for those of you who are not um, familiar with these terms, um, a digital native is basically Gen Y and Gen Z, whoever that is coming up. And these are kids or people who were born in the digital age. They've, their whole life was spent learning and knowing technology. They're immersed. Whereas digital immigrants are like, get off my virtual lawn. So um, he's saying that there's this disconnect because you have um, a group of people who are you know, very much um, wired in to technology, the internet. They do everything online. They, you know, they have their iPods and iPhones, and the rest of us are just sort of like, well, you know, I check my emails and I do some Google, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So he's saying if the educators are disconnected and the student body is connected, then we have a problem, Houston. So the important thing is this. For me, I, I'm not sure that I buy into that because I kind of think all generations, you know, um, have people who are into technology and people who aren't. So to me, that's just more divisive mumbo jumbo. But like I said, the important thing is the human mind, the human mind, not the young one, not the old one, but the human mind learns more when given creative options more than didactic learning because there's sort of an exchange. So the use of visual media is the best way to tap into the most natural means we have 
of obtaining and retaining knowledge. Next. Real and virtual worlds. Now, while the purpose of the IMLS study was to examine and document, analyze and disseminate project learning on the current execution of library YA spaces, to improve on utilization of libraries by youth through creating equitable and engaging spatial sources. I know that's a mouthful. Next, the purpose of the virtual project is more straightforward. It's meant to offer the opportunity to improve the spatial design and service processes at the design and creation stage. So in other words, what we're going to do is, as part of the dissemination phase, the virtual exhibits and the tours of the replicated YA library spaces that we're going to take a tour of in a few minutes, it's going to be made freely available for educational purposes. And we will also be including video footage at each of the three virtual exhibits, so then you can get a look at the real space versus the virtual space. So here we used new 3D content construction methods so that a reviewer via an avatar is able to tour the space from any location. Next. Now we're going to talk about the email invites and YA Spaces tour and here is signs and surveys. So once the participant got the, um, came into the YA space to begin the tour, they went to the area for evaluation before taking the survey. So then the participant goes to the tour, interacts with the environment, and then clicks on the sign to take a survey. Next. So here we are at the tour. After building the virtual spaces, we sent out over 600 um, invites to new graduate students enrolled in Library 203 classes as part of their coursework, and we asked them to participate in the study. This is where it gets a little crazy. So from there, we gathered about 40 usable responses from the students who actually went in, created avatars, toured the space, and completed the web survey. So that's one of the more challenging um, aspects of the study, that just because you go, we it's going to be fun and awesome to go in there, out of 600, we got 40. So there's a lot of um, research that says that we weren't alone in this low response rate which I find astonishing because I go online and people are just giving their two cents left and right on everything that they see but then you know it's like hey take a survey and they're like later so I think I wonder if it's because they're hesitant to give um, their sort of ideas or their input on important subjects like um, you know educational issues but I guess we'll um, know if we keep reading the survey, I mean, uh, the research on that. But once in Second Life, the participant is then instructed to go ahead and view the notice, giving them information on the survey and the tour. And then they're directed to this red tower with directions on how to activate it. And then they go ahead and select Start Tour to begin. Then they are taken to one of the 10 random spaces. Next, the survey questionnaire. So these pictures are of the actual survey the participants um, were able to uh, use and um, you know give their um, input. And as you can see, it's mixed methods. But um, Second Life basic orientation for student survey takers included um, all of this just to make it easier for them to create an avatar in Second Life and navigate through. So what we did was when we sent the invites out and they accept it, we sent them instructions on how to um, create an avatar and navigate Second Life. That's what I meant to say, thank you. And then the 17 questions on the survey included just the basic demographic information, area of library interest, frequency in working and volunteering in libraries, things like that. We reviewed the survey responses on suggested improvements, deciphered the needs of the young patrons, and the adult wish list. And just so you know, there were differences. There was a huge disparity between what the kids wanted and felt they needed and what the adults believed the kids needed and wanted. 
So anyway, again, the data from the surveys was collected for the data compil um, compilation phase. Next. Now we have desired incomes for this virtual study. We want to invite dialogue to affect the transformation in the public library system as well as in the um, LIS coursework. And this is on the professional level as well as the student level. We also want to promote dissemination, access, and change in LIS literature, methodology, and best practices. But more we want to initiate discussion of how library schools as well as what I call complementary professions such as architectural schools and urban design schools, how they might teach this topic on an academic, educational, and professional level. So because this innovative approach leverages internet tools and empowers the library designers to listen to a wide variety of opinions when it comes to building and designing these spaces, and why a patrons want to have more input, uh, input and power, and this gives that to them. Next, segment three is where we show how real um, Second Life and other virtual spaces could serve as a design, survey, and workspace for the creation of real-world YA library spaces. Next, Jane McGonigal. She describes what gamers and educators want to know, or she asks. She says, well, where in the real world is that gamer sense of being fully alive, focused, engaged? Where's that feeling of power, purpose, community, creative accomplishment, the thrill of success, and team victory? Now, gamers may experience these pleasures occasionally in the real world, but they experience them more when they're playing their favorite games. So the goal of this presentation is to plant this seed build the bridge now between the study and the possibilities of blending real-world needs and aspirations with the tools, access, opportunities to collaborate, and flexibility that the virtual world offers for educators and learners and professionals. Next, James P. G. For a long time I was going around going, I like James G. <laughs> and people were just kind of like, who? Most adults don't like the idea of gamification and education mix it. And this is because adults think, well, games are a waste of time. They're violent, and kids spend too much time on computers as it is. But G supports McGonagall's views that gaming is important to education because the benefits, you know, outweigh the negatives. So we shouldn't shy away from adult dogs. We should confront them. We should integrate gameplay with serious academic pursuits. But a lot of people are doubtful because they go, well, are you going to do, uh, what, mix Shakespeare with Call of Duty? Are you going to, you know, mix math and Minecraft? But the research is showing this is not a bad idea. Now, for example, Richard Sweeney's 2005 article in Library Administration and Management called Reinventing Library Buildings and Services for the Millennial Generation. <gasps> Take a deep breath. He believes that the lesson is to reinvent libraries with different and better services and buildings, not just by incrementally improving existing services and buildings. What we have to do is we have to create this strong sense of being capable of helping and creating spaces, and that goes for the young patrons as well. They want to be consulted. They want to help. This allows them input into the design and creating um, of the spaces that are, uh, is basically for them. Library professionals just have to believe. These are perfect prospects and potential that we think virtual worlds like Second Life offers. Next, the research. It shows that library and information science professionals are way behind when it comes to virtual worlds research. Specifically, Bex and Perkins 2014 investigation and evaluation, this is just last year, it states that the amount of innovative research on this topic, articles covering virtual technology in the field of library science, 3% of articles written by LIS professionals in the previous year. Now, meanwhile, strangely enough, virtual reality um, worlds and gaming fields only have 
the biggest, the field with the most articles and research, educational technology, probably because of the growing popularity of gamification. It had 48% of the articles, a full 37.8% uh, of all the articles written on the subject. Research also shows that all generations enjoy gaming. I don't know about this digital native and immigrant stuff, but all generations do. So this is not this change um, that's never going to happen no matter what adults think about video games. Because, you know, remember how that went with the record sales and the movies and the TV shows that were violent and they wanted to, you know, take all that away? Yeah, that didn't work. See Game of Thrones? So anyway, the concerns are there and we do have to address them, but the fact of the matter is we're moving forward with the gamification of the educational curriculum at all levels. Why? Because it's practical. So the benefits, they allow for anytime communications, cooperative multitasking, continuous and experiential learning, and the chance to be challenged while learning new skill sets like coding, design, 3D building, being on a committee, having, you know, a lot of, um, um, you know, uh, responsibilities, things like that, that, um, you know, the younger generation is really hungry to get their hands on, to get, you know, just elbows deep in. So the LIS field, we have a lot of catching up to do. So get busy, people. So next, Jane McGonigal. So she writes, games make life bearable. They give a starving population a feeling of power in a powerless situation, a sense of structure in a chaotic environment. Games gave them a better way to live when their circumstances were otherwise completely unsupportive and uninhabitable. So if this is true for gamers, why not for learners? Why not allow YA patrons the opportunity to engage? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was so busy, like, just moving along. All right, so we're finishing up. Um, just to wrap up, I think that um, this will give everyone involved the power to create the worlds that they crave, both real and virtual. So if you've been, um, you know, using the term virtual reality in place of gaming, you know that this is very possible. Next, that's just for fun. You could take a look at it. It's just like, you know, ha ha. Next. So that's it. I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to run over. I was choking and having problems. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and um, move on over to the tour, and then we're going to go to the party. And I'm so sorry for running over. I, I, I totally didn't mean to. So thank you for listening.